Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled A New Look at MOSFET Turn Off Losses. I'm showing here a half bridge. Actually, it could represent a synchronous buck converter or one leg of a, say, three phase inverter. And I'm showing it in the case of the current coming out, like it'll be in a buck, and ready for this transistor to turn off. It is on now and it's going to be turned off. Well, being on, the current is carried by the transistor, and then when it is turned off, the current goes down, while the voltage across the MOSFET is in increasing, and the midpoint that was high then goes down to about zero. So this is the process of turn off of this upper transistor in the case of the current coming out of the midpoint. Now the losses, are due to the voltage and current overlap and of course the integral of this uh, product is the energy loss. Now as it turns out because this goes linearly down and linearly up then we have actually a second order equation and then when we integrate it uh, we come up with this expression. Notice that there is a sixth in the denominator and not two as you'll find in many places which is incorrect because the two is, is assuming a triangular waveform for the power which is not the case. So the energy lost is a function of the current, the voltage and then the duration of this uh, time. And this is the traditional way of and this is the traditional way of estimating the loss of turn off. Now the question is of course first of all what is this duration? Well, the information given in datasheet is usually, in the case of a MOSFET, is usually the rise time of the voltage. This is what is given in the datasheet, and it is sometimes given for the current load, which is this case, inductive load, that we are talking about, and sometimes it is given for a resistive load, which is not relevant to our case. So in the case of this inductive load, the traditional approach would be, okay, uh, let's have a look at this uh, time, and uh, then this would be the energy lost in the process of the turn off. But things are not that simple. If we look very carefully at the process of the turn off, and we look inside the transistor, and here I'm representing the transistor as a dependent current source, GM times the voltage above the threshold, assuming GM is constant, and the output capacitance, okay? So now, before the turn off, current is evidently passing through the channel. Now, if we have a fast turn off, then the channel is turned off quickly, and the current now will be passing through these capacitors, okay, not through the channel. Okay, so th during the process itself of the transition, there is no current in the channel. So therefore, there is no loss within the channel. There is energy which is stored in the capacitor, but there is no loss in the channel. So the question is, how can I look at this by simulation at least to see what is really going on? And here is uh, my suggestion of how to do that. What I'm showing here on the left is the regular half bridge with the two models of the transistor with some stray inductance if you'd like to include. I'm showing here a driver while here it is off because I'm talking about the turn off of this transistor. And on the right I have the same half bridge but with no drive to the gates. Both of them are zero. And this is just for the sake of looking at the current through the capacitor. Now I can duplicate this current by actually forcing the voltage at this point to be exactly the voltage here. And this is done by this dependent voltage source because the current of a capacitor is a function of dVdt. And if I am forcing here the same dVdt as here, then the current through the capacitor here will be the same as here. So now I can look at the capacitor current and then I can look at the total current and then subtract from it the capacitor current and get the channel current, which is of course very neat. So here it is. This is the picture with the transistor model as it is. This is the drain 
current, this is the voltage, and obviously there is an overlap. This is the classical way you usually look at it. This is the gate, and uh, here, at this point, the current is starting to drop. This, however, is now the current of the capacitor themselves, not the channel. And you see that the upper capacitor is, while being charged, then there is a current, then it decays, and this is the current of the lower capacitor. Now, this point here is actually the diode current, so ignore it, it has nothing to do with the capacitor, because at the end of the process, the uh, transistor is carrying the current and it shows here because uh, of the voltage at the midpoint it is forcing the actual current so this is not to be taken into account just this part and this part and you can see that this is the current through the capacitor now if i subtract from the total transistor current the capacitor current here is what i'm getting and you can see that if the turn off of the channel of the transistor is fast, then the overlap between the current and voltage is really minimal. Now this rise here now depends on the current of the inductor. Here it is. The larger the current, the faster will be this transition and the faster will be the VDT. It has nothing to do with the transistor itself. It has to do with the inductor. So the inductor is actually determining the rate at which this voltage is changing. So this rate of the voltage is a function of the current, and this rate of the current is a function of how fast I turn off the transistor. It has to do with the resistance of the turn off resistor. The smaller the resistor, the faster will be this transition. And here I'm showing what happens if I have different currents, okay, in the inductor. So what we see here, uh, this is the transistor itself and this is the channel this is the fast transition of the current and you see here the rise of the voltage or the change of the voltage across the transistor and this is of course a function of the current the faster the larger the current the faster is this uh, transition now what about the energy in the capacitor well the high side capacitor output capacitor of the transistor is being charged and while this one the lower side is discharged so this is now the charging of the upper capacitor and this is the charging of the lower capacitor and you see that uh, by simulation i'm getting just a, about the same energy in these two processes which is kind of makes sense because if I have two identical capacitors, the two transistors are the same, if I am charging one, discharging the other one, then the total amount of energy in the system is constant. So during this process, there is no change in the total energy of these capacitors. Now what happens if I change the resistance of the gate resistor? Now this will slow down the transition of the current. Let's have a look here. This is after subtracting the capacitor current. This is just looking at the channel current. Now for one ohm, transition is fast, overlap is little, but if the resistance is 10 ohm, then the current change is slower, and then you get indeed an overlap, and this is real loss within the channel during the turn off. And again, this explains why is it that we would like very much to turn off the transistor very quickly to be at this situation here in which the overlap is really minimal. Now the energy stored in this upper capacitor during the turn off process is in fact causing a power loss in the channel itself during the turn on. That is, the capacitor is being charged during turn off and being discharged during turn on and all this energy is dumped into the transistor causing a loss. So the point is that either you look at the total energy during turn off and this will include the capacitance energy and this is the total loss of the system or you look just at the loss of the channel and then during turn on, you have to take into account that this capacitor is being discharged. And let me just emphasize here that if you take into account this loss here, which we understand now 
is not really a loss but actually energy absorbed part of it might be lost and part of it is the capacitor charging so if you already take into account this loss you should not again talk about losses due to the output capacitance because you have already taken into account during the turn off and taking it into account again during turn on is taking it twice which is of course incorrect if however the operation is in soft switching like in a BCM then we have a reversal of the current here which means that when the tr lower transistor is on then the current at this point is actually going this direction not through the diode as it would be in hot switching but through the transistor itself so when this transistor now is turned off then there is a self commutation very similar to what we've seen before for the upper transistor at turn off and this will cause actually the discharging of this capacitor in a lossless way so in this case the energy in the two capacitor in fact uh, is being recycled so this is one big benefit of soft switching so now the question is how can you estimate the losses now no matter if you like to estimate the total energy absorbed or just to separate into the channel loss and the capacitance uh, charging very difficult and very inaccurate to do it analytically using information from data sheet and the reason is that not all the parameters are available in the data sheet and secondly the data sheet is giving the parameters for a given operating point which is usually not the operating point that you are interested in so i am advocating using simulation this is the best way for estimating losses i think today now what about the effect of stray inductance on losses well this is a very difficult issue uh, to actually analyze analytically and again simulation is probably a better way although simulation in this case is not that good because um, the models that we have of transistor are not very good in this uh, sensitive region of say reverse recovery spikes etc they are not very good at that but this is the best of the available options that is simulation is really not very good but there's nothing else which is better so i again think that the best way to estimate and to look at the effect of strain inductances that could be anywhere i'm showing it here but it could be here of course and here here it's everywhere and inside the transistor itself as a matter of fact so the best way is i think uh, by simulation and i'm showing here you see the channel current in the case of some in stray inductance and i'm talking here about uh, 500 pico henry fairly low and you see that already there is some effect here and although the resistor is one ohm okay still you have now a slower drop of the current due to the inductance which of course will have an effect on the losses so what are the implications here first of all i've shown that the process of turn off is really a loss free process if the turn off of the channel is fast now the energy of the two capacitor is the total energy is constant uh, before and after the transition there is minimum loss within the channel if the turn off is fast and the loss is practically independent of the current so it's different from this uh, traditional expression in which you multiply the expression by current here the current is changing the slope which makes not much of a difference for the losses of the channel itself and then we've seen that the energy loss of this capacitor is during turn on although during turn off this capacitor is being charged and then sort of waiting on to actually be dumped into the transistor and cause the actual power loss and finally soft switching can recycle the 
capacitance energy and of course reduce the total loss. This brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.